Okay guys, I'm back again. This time with a quick review on the Kipper Sign Master IG-1000P. This unit was actually sent to me for review by the good folks over at Kipper Power Systems North America. I just wanted to go ahead and give them a special shout out because they have worked with me over the past two months that I've been reviewing this generator uh, through my various issues. I've had some really weird things happen to me this year. Uh, the first is going to be I had a few deaths in my family, unexpected deaths. I uh, had to go out of town during the uh, review period for this unit and ended up uh, in extending the review then. And then on top of that, uh, we had the Detroit floods this year and my house actually got hit. I had to clean everything out of my basement so that further extended the time. Uh, I ended up doubling the review time on this unit. It was only supposed to be a month. Uh, that has gone up to two months and a little bit over. Um, now that I've had the various issues and I'm still cleaning out my basement right now. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Kipper for working with me, uh, the various folks over there uh, that I've worked with. I really do appreciate it. Uh, but with that being said, this is not a paid review. I never take paid reviews. Um, I'm not forced to say anything nice about this item. You're just going to get an honest review out of me. The only thing I've uh, ever received uh, and in this case too is a sample unit for testing and evaluation. Uh, besides that, I've been given free range to, um, you know, do my review, um, give my honest opinion of it, and that's what I do with all my reviews. Never will I do a paid review, just to let you guys know. Uh, but the IG-1000P is an inverter style generator with 900 running watts, 1,000 surge watts. Uh, it features a 53.5 cc four cycle engine, which is kept inside of a double walled enclosure allowing this unit to operate between 54 and 59 decibels. Uh, it operates for up to four hours at the 900 watt rating via the 0.7 gallon fuel tank. Uh, you'll get much longer battery life if you go uh, with lesser wattage. In fact, uh, what I've uh, tested it with is I've gotten um, 12 hours out of the unit out of a uh, 200 watt load with a full tank of gas. And I've gotten around five hours out of it with around a 30 watt load with some unmeasurable amount of gas. I mean, it was such a small amount, uh, much less than, I would say, a cup or something like that. Very, very small amount of gas that I've gotten uh, this unit to run off of, uh, but runs for a nice and long time. So, other features include a low oil shutdown, uh, it has inverter protection. Uh, this is uh, not too expensive of a unit and the fact that it has that is very important because a lot of alternative units uh, and I'm speaking alternatively about uh, units like the Honda EU1000 and the uh, Yamaha EF1000 those are typically the two that people know about and uh, people choose and with the alternative units some have been horrible where the, where the inverters have blown up and the engines have gone bad because they're made with cheap quality components and they give other alternative units a bad name. So people typically, hey, if it's not a Honda or Yamaha, I'm not going to buy it. Uh, we'll pretty much boot this unit out of the way because they think, oh, it's not a Honda or Yamaha. It must be horrible. But this unit is actually fairly uh, good. I mean, it's comparable with the Honda uh, as far as features, uh, quality, as far as the two months I've tested it with 24 hours of operation. I've ha had absolutely no problems with it. Uh, as far as its function and it also matches the Honda's warranty. It comes with a two-year uh, residential warranty, a year for commercial uh, which matches the Honda's with other alternative units, the ones that I'm not going to mention the names of that uh, have some problems with their inverters or their engines uh, typically come with a one-year residential 30-day uh, commercial or rental warranty. Uh, so this guy is top-notch for, uh, for the money it comes in right around five to six hundred dollars depending on where you get it uh, whereas that Yamaha and the Honda unit are going to come in between eight hundred and a thousand units all depending uh, so really good value as far as I'm concerned um, the unit comes with a couple of accessories uh, first thing you're going to get that I really like is this little oil cup uh, it comes with the perfect volume uh, to fill up the unit so you just fill up this cup fill up the unit and the unit is uh, sufficiently filled you don't have to really measure uh, comes with a spare spark plug this, this is a uh, Bosch UG5 spark plug a pretty nice little spark plug there uh, definitely not a cheap one 
we have a spark plug removal tool and it's a brass tool so that uh, you don't mar the surfaces of the aluminum engine. The block and head are made out of aluminum. Uh, you're also going to get the DC charging cable and the uh, manual and a little plastic baggie which contains a quality certificate as well as your uh, registration information. So what I mentioned about the DC charging cable is uh, comes with these nice little insulated uh, positive and negative alligator clips and goes into this proprietary uh, plug here. Comes with around a four foot length of cable, but I did find an issue with this cable. Uh, more specifically, the alligator clips. They're just too small. Uh, what I found is trying to connect up to the uh, post of my car battery. Uh, these clips don't really connect around the little round post. I kind of have to go with the ancillary uh, little posts for like my alarm system in order to get these to fit. And then also with the positive side, uh, it actually came apart on me. The little spring on the inside popped out. Uh, but luckily enough, it was really easy to fix. I just popped it back in and now it's within, uh, within normal operation. Uh, but that's just something that I'll mention about the cable. As far as the exterior of the unit, um, it's plastic because it's uh, designed to keep the unit quiet. This is a double walled enclosure. The outer enclosure, the yellow, uh, helps quiet down the mechanics of the engine and the inverter, which typically from a small single cylinder engine is where the noise is going to come from. A lot of people think it's the exhaust. Uh, but it's incorrect. It's actually coming from the valve train of the engine. So having this plastic enclosure on the outside and again on the inside uh, really helps to quiet the noise down this unit. And overall, uh, when I used the unit, uh, it was very quiet operating. In fact, from the house, I could barely hear this unit running uh, when it was only around 15 to 20 feet away. So on the front side here, we have everything you need. Uh, to start the unit, we have the uh, choking lever, we have the starter string, and I know this is going to sound kind of nerdy, but it's a really nice starter string. It feels pretty good, and it's a nylon starter string, so you don't have to worry about it fraying or coming apart or breaking on you after uh, you know many starts, which can be a problem uh, for some other cheaper units. But really nice starter string. Uh, it has a on-off switch, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. Uh, not only does it control the spark of the uh, engine, but it also controls the flow of fuel. So if you're like me, when you store your units, you want to turn off your fuel and keep the spark going so that it can take all the gas out of the fuel line and the carburetor. You can't do that with this unit. Uh, your only choice is to either drain the bowl or to um, run the gas completely out of the unit. That's what I'm going to do when um, storing this guy. And just put like a 500 watt load on it, let it run out of gas, and then be done with it. But also on this side, you have your uh, your access panel for accessing the air filter as well as the oil, and it just comes uh, with this little screw. It takes a regular flathead screw. You don't have to have any special start pattern or anything like that. And then uh, it screws into a uh, metal. It looks like grass uh, fixture there, so you're not stripping out plastic in case you over tighten it. But inside the section here, we have the air filter, which needs to be pre oiled before you start the unit, and mine kind of did come pre oiled. I'll explain that in a second. It's kind of a funny story. Uh, but we also have the oil fill, dipstick check, and drain. It has a little chute to, um, to drain the oil without spilling it back into the unit. We also have a couple of little small fuel lines coming down. I don't know if you guys can see those, but one is the overflow for the carburetor, and then the other is that drain I mentioned. Uh, you just take a little small screwdriver, twist it uh, counterclockwise, and that allows any fuel inside the bottom of the carburetor bowl uh, to drain out safely at the bottom of the unit. You can have a little drip pan or something, but they both exit the bottom of the unit at the side of that panel there. Uh, as far as anything else on the inside, you can't really see anything uh, that's behind these black panels because that is the second part of the enclosure. That's the inner enclosure uh, that goes over the mechanics of the engine to help keep it quieter. So that's it on the front panel. Again, very easy to 
put on and take off. In fact, I'm not even going to tighten it down all the way and it's still pretty secure. On the front of the unit, we have the main output side of the unit and that's going to have the circuit breaker, the smart throttle switch, the DC charging section which has a 5 amp fuse because it's a 5 amp output. We have a bank of three LEDs. The top one is the green output indicator which indicates normal operation of the unit. We have an overload alarm which indicates the unit is uh, surging uh, which means you know you're starting a motor or something like that and it's near the maximum capacity it will flash and it'll go a solid red once the unit is overloaded at which point the AC uh, power will be cut and the circuit breaker will come out that unit, uh, the light will stay red and then the unit will go down to idle. Uh, we have the grounding terminal, parallel ports, and then finally we have two North American style grounded power outlets. I think that's called a 20 amp duplex outlet, officially. At the back, we don't have access to anything, we just have various warning stickers and of course the Kipper uh, label. Turning it to the exhaust side, we have the spark arrestor down the middle that you need to access uh, every year or every 300 hours. You do that by taking out these four screws. Uh, this is also where the uh, hot air that is used to uh, uh, cool the uh, inverter unit as well as the engine comes out. It has a couple of various air intakes on the front side, on the side there, and at the bottom. Uh, another special thing about this section is the exhaust is actually cooled as well. Uh, it, in, it introduces fresh air into the unit uh, before it uh, sends the exhaust out to cool the exhaust gases uh, so that it has less of a chance of catching something on fire. Uh, then I've, I've actually tested it. I can get within three inches of that exhaust and not burn myself. Uh, so pretty nice that it has those features. Around the top, of course, we're going to have the carry handle and fuel uh, cap fuel cap has a vent as well as a fuel strainer on the inside which has a max fuel marker uh, to tell you uh, when the tank is full. At the bottom we have rubber feet and a cooling vent and that's it as far as the exterior dimensions. So when I first got this unit uh, the first thing I noticed was how light it was. It comes in at 30.8 pounds dry. That's going to weigh around 35 pounds when you have the uh, the 2.6 liters or 0.7 gallons worth of fuel in it, uh, but it's still not heavy at all. In fact, it's got a fuel tank of gas, right, a full tank of gas right now, and I can lift it with just my index finger. Kind of hurts though, uh, but that just shows you how light the unit is. I've had various people pick this unit up uh, in various age groups, and everyone has noticed how light it is. Uh, that's one thing I've noticed when using this for yard work and everything. It's just how light it is and how small it is. It doesn't take up much space. And uh, people that previously put off buying generators for themselves uh, because they felt that they were too heavy uh, really liked picking up this unit. So, very light little unit. Uh, but also, when I first got it, I noticed uh, the unit was covered in oil. Uh, it's this little clip you'll see here. Uh, the unit, when I first unboxed it, there were some oil stains on the box. And when I took the plastic bag off of it, unit was soaked in oil. Uh, the oil seemed to be coming from the uh, section of the air filter which is why I mentioned it was pre-oiled uh, when I got it. And It's not the fault of Kipper. Uh, the unit is tested at the factory uh, with a little uh, oil and gas in order to make sure it actually functions before sending it out to customers. And what happens is they always, you can't get every drop of oil out of it. There's always some residual oil left over. And since the unit is so light, it can be shipped you through UPS, and UPS generally likes to mess up your packages. They either kick them around or turn them upside down. In this case, they turned it upside down, and the residual oil that was left leaked out of the uh, intake into the air filter and around other parts of the case as it was tossed around by UPS. But it uh, didn't cause any failures or any issues with the unit. I just simply cleaned it up, and the unit ran uh, fine. Uh, as far as it running, when I first started it, the unit was fairly loud. Uh, next to it, it was in the high 70 decibel range. And that's just because the unit was brand new, the exhaust hadn't been broken in yet, and it was operating a little bit louder than it should have. After around four hours of operation, the unit quieted down to around, 
I think it was the low 70 decibels uh, right next to the unit. At 23 feet, it was right near the manufacturer's rating. Uh, I believe that was at 60 decibels, uh, which may have been uh, sort of boosted up because I was in an enclosed area, whereas the manufacturer is going to test this unit in an open field. Uh, but throughout the operation of the unit, uh, it seemed to stay fairly consistent with the sound, you know, 60 decibels, 59 decibels at 23 feet in the area I was testing it at. Uh, really quiet operation at, uh, you know, even further distances than that. I think I got around 54 decibels uh, at around 45 feet away. As far as the temperature of the unit, uh, I tested this in a variety of different temperatures, uh, ranging from 90 degrees all the way down to 50 degrees. Thank you, Michigan weather. Uh, the 50 degrees came from, uh, you know, September here, uh, around September 10th, September 11th, uh, when we had these cold, cold temperatures here. And the unit seemed to start fine, uh, still starts one or two pools just like it would in the summertime, and also seemed to run fine. Um, didn't really need the uh, choke any more than a few seconds uh, after I turned the choke off, you know, the unit ran consistently so really consistent little unit um, as far as loads I've been able to test it with various loads I've had loads from 38 watts all the way up to near 800 watts and the unit has handled them with ease uh, hasn't overloaded on me it's given me the rated capacity that the manufacturer claims uh, without overloading it which a lot of cheap generators uh, cheaper than this uh, as far as quality goes. They may be the same price, but I don't believe they're the same quality as this unit. Uh, will not give you their rated capacity. They'll give you somewhere around 100 or so watts less, uh, which is another reason people typically choose Honda and Yamaha because they think all the alternatives are junk, and that's just not the case uh, with this unit. So it's, it's been a pretty good unit. There's not much more I can say about it. Uh, but you'll see everything I've, uh, I've claimed and said in this video in uh, demo videos right after uh, this little scene here. Uh, but let me go over my overall likes and dislikes of this unit. Uh, my overall likes are going to be the fuel savings uh, with this unit. Very small gas tank and it sips the fuel from that. Uh, it's a very quiet generator at uh, 54 to 59 decibels. It's very light, which means during an emergency, like with the floods I had come through my area, this unit can be placed on a shelf uh, in case, you know, the garage flooded. I would still have emergency power if the power went out because my generator will be safe. Uh, it comes with a long two-year warranty, and overall, it's very reliable. I've never had any issues uh, with reliability on this unit. As far as dislikes, I feel that the fuel neck is too narrow. A lot of times I experience fuel spills uh, when using EPA rated containers to refill the unit because they sort of chug. So I have to use a, uh, a little fuel funnel in order to fill up the unit. Uh, the DC charging voltage is fairly high. It's between 15 and 30 volts. I experienced anywhere from 21 to 30 volts with my multimeter. And it charges a battery relatively quickly even though it's only 5 amps. Uh, with a completely dead car battery, uh, and I'm not talking where the lights won't come on, I'm talking around a 10 volt range, it will charge that battery from 10 volts all the way up to 14 volts in under four hours, and it, from there will quickly, within a few minutes, overcharge the battery uh, because it's not regulated. That's a common issue with uh, portable generators is they don't have a regulated DC output, but in this case the voltage for the DC is also pretty high. Uh, the alligator clips are also uh, too small, but besides that, no real issues with the generator. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, demo video. So it's around five or eight minutes worth of demos uh, for you to see this guy in operation, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, I'm outside again with the uh, Kipper uh, G1000P. And it's a little bit louder this time. There it is right there have it off of uh, economy mode it's probably about 18 feet away so it's running at full speed have it hooked up via a cheap 100 watt extension cord like a 20 something dollar extension cord and I have that going into a uh, kilowatt P3 international uh, power usage meter so uh, we're looking at the volts 119.4 at the end of the 100 foot cord uh, no amps 
60 hertz and what we're going to try to run here is one of these uh, blowers this is a works GT I have plugged in with another probably around 25 foot cord Alright guys, so what I want to do next is test the DC charging functionality of the generator. I've already done this off camera and I'll read the results at the end. Uh, but what I first want to do is show you how to set up DC charging. So what I've done, uh, the generator is running in eco mode right now. Uh, will charge in that mode, uh, but not as high of a rate. Uh, so, you, so if you want to get a battery charged uh, at the full 5 amps, at 12 volts you need to put it in the full output mode uh, but I just plug the cable in cables connect to a battery one special notice if you have a um, battery like this without marine terminals uh, you will have to work out something like a little clamp there to hold it onto the battery because the actual clamps that come with the uh, unit are too small to fit on the uh, little round terminals of that battery so I have a clamp there, I'm going to freehand the other one just for demonstration purposes. The so open circuit voltage is at 31 volts. Alright, so you see this battery is fully charged. Um, it charges up quickly from a completely dead state. This battery let me turn off the generator here. But from a uh, completely dead state, it took uh, right around three, maybe a little less hours uh, to charge that battery up since the uh, since the voltage is kind of high and it's had a good amount of current. Plug in the fridge. Didn't seem to load it down too much. Let's turn. So I'll put it back in economy mode. Let's go take a look at the fridge. In. following the cord I thought it would have put more of a load on it so let's make sure the compressor is on okay oh yeah definitely on compressors running yeah, fridge sun sort of a mess. I took some food out of here because it was in the basement. We have lights. Ice dispenser doesn't have a water line hooked up, but it is running. Lights. Let's take a look at our uh, kilowatt meter. Oops. So, at the end of this 100 foot thin wire cheap extension core, still pretty good voltage. Uh, 118 volts as long as it's 110 or higher we're fine so that's the voltage now I'm going to hit the amps uh, it's drawing 1.34 amps we're at uh, 151 watts uh, so a little bit different from what I saw in house power but right at 60 Hertz guys as you can see from the demos the unit is fairly quiet and to my surprise and probably yours too it runs a fridge it runs an outdoor leaf blower and um, various other devices um, even though it's you know it's only 30 pounds and rated for 900 watts it does pretty good uh, with running various different devices uh, so as 
you know, quick tips for anyone who may be thinking about buying this unit. Maybe this is your first time buying a generator. Uh, here's a few tips of uh, things you may want to know. Uh, get f get a fuel can, at least two gallons in capacity, so that you have enough fuel to fill up the unit and have some reserve fuel. Uh, get regular 10W30 oil for your break-in oil. Uh, the break-in period is 10 hours uh, for the oil. After 10 hours, you have to change the oil. My oil was kind of dirty, but didn't really contain any uh, metal flakes that you would normally expect. Uh, but the overall break-in for the unit is 20 hours. You never run and run the unit more than uh, a 50% load for the first uh, 20 hours. But uh, change it with fully synthetic oil uh, after the break-in period uh, to help keep the unit from uh, wearing down too early. Uh, if you have ethanol in your fuel like I do here in Michigan, get a fuel stabilizer. Always run fuel uh, stabilizer through your generator, but specifically get a fuel stabilizer that treats ethanol and that's what I use in this generator because we have up to 10% ethanol in, uh, in the state of Michigan here, especially at my local uh, stations. Uh, but if you're going to use this to charge batteries, use an automatic battery charger instead of the DC output that's built into the unit. Uh, run the unit out of fuel for long storage and also uh, allow the unit to uh, cool down before putting a cover on it or storing it back in your garage. That'll help keep uh, accidents like fires uh, from happening. Also, get a power analyzer. Uh, something like a kilowatt P3 meter is what I use. You can get any other type to help you get your rated loads before you plug them into the generator so you can see, hey, this unit uh, will run 900 watts. I have a load I tried on this and it's a thousand watts. That's not going to work. Or, uh, hey, I ran a, a, a appliance that only pulls 600 watts that will work on this unit. And also for the uh, analyzer, get a little adapter because what I forgot to mention in the negatives is the unit actually has a uh, inset set of plugs. They're, they have a little lip here so you can't plug in the power analyzer uh, directly into the unit. You have to have an adapter and that goes for power bricks as well. Uh, it has sort of a curve here and it's also inset so that you can't plug in uh, plugs quite as easily as you think. But just a small issue there. Uh, besides that, get a battery operated carbon monoxide detector if you're going to be running this overnight for emergency power outages. I don't anticipate if you keep the unit 15 feet away from your house and make sure your windows on the side is operating or closed, that you would have any issues, but that's just added insurance. And then another thing is to install an hour meter. This is going to be a separate video. Uh, from the main review here, but I'm going to be installing an hour meter on this unit just to keep tabs on maintenance and how, how long the unit has been operating. But uh, besides that, this is not going to end with this review. I'm going to continue to use this unit, and if anything happens with it, I'll let you guys know. Uh, winter is coming up pretty soon here in Michigan. I don't have to tell you guys how cold the winters will get. We're darn near Canada. Uh, but I'll go ahead and do cold starts and uh, you know, see how the unit operates and probably this winter sub-zero temperatures. Uh, so as always guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If I have, I'll go ahead and annotate that. But if you guys have any questions about this unit, how to operate it, how to uh, do maintenance to it, uh, what features it has, go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll try to answer that for you guys. Uh, but as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.